क्रिप्टो उत्पादक एन एफ नियमित हैं और अत्याधिक जोखिम भरे हो सकते हैं ये संभव है कि इस तरह के लेन से हुए किसी भी नुकसान के लिए नियमित सहारा प्राप्त न हो So we are live now. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So we are live now. Uh, and Dhritman uh, is with us. So Dhritman, will do you uh, would you like sure. to initiate? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the YouTube live session of um, Coin DCX with the Deep Web Three. Um, our discussion today is centered around the exciting possibilities that lie ahead in India's digital landscape, as conversations in policy uh, intensify about transforming this decade into a decade for india one term that has been making waves worldwide is web3 uh, which is the topic of discussion today in this context our session aims to delve into the future of web3 within the rapidly evolving indian digital ecosystem uh, what it means what india's digital future really is in particular when we look at um, the young people right now how uh, involved they are with the internet how they're internet native right now internet first people and we're here to explore the potential opportunities and challenges that um come with this opportunity that india has right now so first i'd like to introduce our key speaker mr karthik chidambaram um a prominent figure within the indian national congress and holds the distinguished position of being a member of parliament in the lok sabha his unwavering dedication to public service is evident in his role as a valuable member of the parliamentary standing committee on communications and information technology He stands out for his forward-thinking approach to regulating the technology space. He believes in protecting consumers' interests without stifling competition or entrepreneurship, and through his diligent efforts, has consistently advocated for a balanced ecosystem for consumers and businesses to thrive. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kashif Raza, who will be our uh, moderator for this session. Um, he's Thank the you. founder of Bitinnings and also the co-founder of Crypto Kanun, who I'm sure most of us are very familiar with. his unwavering commitment to bring, bridging the knowledge gap in this exciting field has been truly commendable before venturing into web3 and crypto he had honed his skills as a marketer having trained and worked with prestigious companies like PepsiCo Sony and Disney UTV this diverse background has endowed him with a unique perspective and a profound understanding of effectively communicating complex concepts to a broad audience with that out of the way um let's get into the conversation uh dhritman i can't see him on screen so uh, one second Yeah, I'm there. Hello. Yeah, hi, uh, Karthi. Now yeah, it's yeah, audible. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes. I can, yes. I can hear you right now. Yes, I am. And uh, yeah. Okay. Hello. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can hear you, Karthi. I can hear you. I think his uh, internet connection seems to have broken. Let's just give it a second. Okay, he should just rejoin now. Okay. 
Hello. Hi, sir. Hello. Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you, but I seem to be going off every ever so often. So. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I think the I'm, internet. I'm I'm, uh... I'm, 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 I'm literally sitting on top of the router. <laughs> I'm literally sitting on that. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, I that's, can't get that's any closer to this unless I. Yeah, I'm literally sitting on. No, I mean, it's, it's that it's, is it's, that is very. It's right next to me. I can't, I can't. I can't get any. I can't get any closer to this router at all anymore. So. <laughs> I can understand, sir. Technology and all these live sessions without a goof up is not a live session. I mean, live session has to have these kind of things. So it, that's perfectly okay. Yeah, where is it? Fine, I'm good. As, Let's go. As, as a content creator, Dhritman will agree that we face these issues every day, every single day. So that's okay with us. And uh, so can we start, Dhritman? Yeah. So uh, why don't you put your video off? It, I think maybe it'll help. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. So I should switch my video off. Is that what I should do? Yeah, I think that would be a better idea. Yeah, I so can you hear us? Okay, cool. I like it. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. All right, let's right. go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay, let's do it. Because the important is uh, to understand his views. Uh, and so video, yeah, it would have been great. But the of most course. important thing right now is that we want to hear his views. So to begin with, uh, Karthi, I want to begin with... And my, this question is very interesting, by the way, after all this what has happened in the past seven minutes that we want to know that Karthi Chidambaram is a technology guy or not because most of the time what happens that from an outsider no, so no you, you, you have to give an honest answer that we want to understand that Karthi Chidambaram is a technology guy or not and uh, what are Karthi Chidambaram's uh, prediction for future in terms of technology right that what as per him is going to really change the world in future this particular thing is really going to change the world so your predictions for that and are you a technology guy or not no, no i'm not a technology guy i can't switch on the television anymore because it's got too many <laughs> remotes and i do not know uh, in which the television works and which the ott works i always need to get somebody to help me i i can use phone ipad and it's it's only restricted to that. I can send email, receive messages, you know, see social media, that kind of thing. But I'm definitely not uh, very technology conversant and I need help all the mm -hmm. time. I definitely need help mm -hmm. switch the television, to, the hell, to mm -hmm. switch the television off. That's for sure. The television has just become too complicated. It used to be power on, power off, uh, channel up, channel down, volume on, volume yeah. down. So I, mm -hmm. now it's just too complicated. I mean, I don't know. Why do they have so many buttons in a television remote? I mean, does anybody use <laughs> all the buttons on a television remote? I mean, I actually should do a survey. It's got about, I don't know, it has about 30, 40 buttons in it. I don't know yeah, what 30, 40 buttons for. I really don't know what this is for. So, mm. uh, but, I, but I, 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 I understand the I understand convenience of technology. And I think technology yeah. is definitely... The, yeah, technology, you know, real-time information is definitely going to help people. Uh, it's also going to intrude on people, people's lives. Um, you know, technology, I mean, I, I'm not a, such a great futurist to predict what technology will happen. I mean, I mean, it's all, mm. all kinds of things are happening. And technology also fails spectacularly. You just saw the uh, Titan submersible uh, implode mm. yeah. very tragically. So, so, so it's mm. not as if technology is infallible. Um, but, mm. uh, but what the future will hold, I don't know. I really don't know. But yes, information is going to be uh, more democratically available, but at the same time, it's also going to get manipulated because of uh, algorithms, which will make you uh, only read things which you've already been reading. And it will also shut you out from, uh, from a diverse perspective. That's definitely going to happen because uh, I know even now, what you read on social media only is what you be on social media. You don't read anything new. And uh, it's sort of uh, and more and more filters will happen. You'll get into more silos. So, so it's, 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 while it will create a lot of opportunities, but it will also create a lot of uh, uh, insular problems, in my opinion. Hmm. So, you know, since this is a very interesting take, you said, uh, you said manipulation and you said, you know, because uh, that that's what we have seen in Web2. I mean, in Web2, we, we saw that many companies like Facebook, like Meta, uh, 
Twitter, uh, you know, Google and Microsoft and all that. All these companies, actually, what they did was that they collected the data. They stored that data at one place. You know, we, we, they have so much of, in, of an information of an individual and, you know, around the world. I mean, uh, somewhere you believe that, uh, you certainly believe in this theory that somewhere the data is manipulated when it gets stored at one place. Hello. I can't hear you. I, I, I lost you a bit. I mean, I believe privacy is dead. Hmm. I really believe privacy is dead. I think if you use electronic devices or electronic payment methodologies or anything hmm. which is on the web, privacy is dead. I mean, maybe another individual might not know, but there is there is some system which is which knows what you're doing and where you're going, who you're talking to, who are you with. Uh, what you're ordering. Mm. So privacy is li literally dead. I mean, uh, uh, whatever uh, people might say, I think there is always a way of working around it and finding out what people do. So uh, that's definitely a, a price we're all going to pay. Uh, the minute you use a credit card, we know exactly where you're buying it, what you're buying, um, where you are, uh, everything. So making a phone call, being just mm. holding a phone and being anywhere. We know that they, you can actually uh, sort of zone in exactly in which location you are in. So privacy is dead. I mean, in a, in a, in a larger set. But whether an individual pilot is getting violated, we don't know. But if somebody wants to access that information, I'm sure large uh, st state actors can access that information. And even people who have access to hacking technologies can can get get into it. So 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 individual liberty, uh, in a way, while it's democratized is the access to information it also violates your privacy in many many ways so karthi uh, want to ask you this question that recently we also came to know that you know government is somewhere planning to uh, make uh, you know laws and regulation regarding the privacy of data and uh, uh, so there is a standing committee as well where the yes, you know yes. proposed bill has gone for a uh, for a review what is your take on that? I mean, how how I, 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 I am in the stand, I am in the standing committee. So I'm yeah, not, you are in the standing uh, committee. Yeah, yeah. I am not at the liberty to discuss what we discussed in the standing committee because okay, okay. it is only it is only preliminary. So I mean, we only report to parliament. So we are not at the liberty to discuss that. All right. But yes, there That's is a, a bill in in the works. The bill has not yet been tabled in parliament. So when the government decides to table it in parliament, we'll all come to know about it. But they they have told us this. I can say that they have told us that they have held extensive public um, um, uh, discussions with stakeholders and they open it up for uh, for public opinion. So I do not know for how many okay. uh, people bother to give their opinion, but apparently uh, they have done, uh, that, that's what the ministry claims, that they have done an extensive exercise in opening it up and seeking public okay. opinion on a data protection bill. All right. Fair but enough. we'll only know the efficacy of it when, when, when it's actually tabled in parliament, but it's not been tabled in parliament and I'm definitely not in a liberty to tell you what we discussed in committee because that's in camera. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, Karthi, since it's a it's a crypto, uh, you know, oriented company, Coin DCX is a crypto exchange, and many listener and audience when they'll see when they'll hear this podcast, they'll uh, they'll like to understand that uh, what was what was that first time when you heard of the term Bitcoin, and what was your first reaction to it? Uh, so wanted to know about that you know because this is very interesting whenever a guest comes on a podcast this is like a first question that when you came to know about bitcoin and what was your first reaction to it did you ever thought that it was a ponzi or it was a technology that is going to survive for some decent time what was your first reaction to that see as i told you i'm not i'm not very conversant with technology i didn't know what i've been educated about it now but initially i was very skeptical about it i didn't know what this was i thought it was one more of a Ponzi. The Ponzi is the right word. I thought that something was an inflated uh, stock or an asset which is going to go up and then somebody's going to get hurt along the way. But then, mm. as I applied my mind a little bit more to it, see, what I understand is about currencies is that now it's the it's basically in the sovereign right of nations. Uh, mm. Nations only issue currencies. Nobody else or central banking authorities issue currencies. So, but uh, by having this kind of Bitcoin kind of alternative currencies. You're really challenging. Um, you're really challenging central banking authorities, and that's why nation states are very wary of it. 
and i i personally think that you know, you're sort of going back to a to an era of a barter system before there was a central uh, currency uh, authority uh, if if mm-hmm. a group of people decide that um, you know um, you know if, if uh, say a pack of cards can be a currency it's it that's currency as long as that you know that that those group of people are willing to accept it in exchange for goods and services so if the alternative currencies start coming in and they start getting accepted it actually erodes nation states and mm-hmm. that's the that's the fear which nation states have but i'm not sure that that's a bad thing I, i'm not sure that the idea of uh, central banking authorities uh, why should that be the centrality of always of all uh, currency you know uh, issuing authorities and if 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 groups of people can come to some understanding and create alternative currencies and if that currency is is uh, is backed and people have confidence in it why can't that be there so why can't it be there so and uh, if you're going to have say blockchain technology which basically works on the idea that many people are validating a transaction and the reward for blockchain has to be uh, something otherwise blockchain doesn't work i understand yeah. but blockchain only works if there is some reward and the reward has to be in the form of a cryptocurrency so how do you reward that's the mining you do and that's the that's the uh, reward you give them otherwise how does blockchain work if you don't have a reward everybody talks about blockchain saying blockchain is so good you know you have this chain of data which can't be altered uh, but that that data needs to be validated if i'm right and to to validate the data you need many many processes and many many people and for doing the process and uh, and that the effort you need to be rewarded and that reward is cryptocurrency so cryptocurrency is needed for blockchain to work is my understanding can blockchain work without cryptocurrency uh, what will be the reward for blockchain without uh, what will be the blo- if, if cryptocurrency is not there what will be the reward for blockchain validation and cryptocurrency is being now issued outside the central banking authorities and if they are accepted as uh, as a medium of exchange then they are eroding the central banking authority uh, authorities rich uh, which 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 is which is sort of altering the the power equation of the world of finance which is i mean i'm not too sure that i'm not sure that that's a necessarily a bad thing i'm not i'm not i'm not going to immediately jump in and say that's so bad no i i i mean the idea of nation states uh, being absolutely supreme uh, you know you know governing a geographic area and then issuing currencies why should that not be challenged at all yeah absolutely uh, 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 i think you have a uh... very good understanding of the subject uh, because most of the people think that you know uh, politicians generally don't have an understanding of uh, this technology but i think <laughs> the way people, you described it just just problem. just tells us yeah, just tells us that you are a technology guy you 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 are just too humble about uh, but no i as i said i've, I've been a little educated about this subject but i don't know whether my understanding is right i don't know this is what i've been yeah. this is my no, understanding no. of it i'm i'm still not sure whether i'm right about it. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh, absolutely because you know the as far as the uh, the concern of the rbi or concern of all the central banks around the world is that if uh, bitcoin is used as uh, a medium of exchange you know in the economy obviously that will lead to a parallel economy and uh, you know they cannot allow that to happen obviously because it will be a threat to the existing monetary policy because the rbi or the or the central banks around the world have a similar concern that they will not be having a right control exactly. over the monetary system yeah, yeah so that is they're, that... they're losing their they 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 are losing their rate basically you know suppose we all decide in a club you know decide to do is barter then what happens you just start using barter the, the whole system i'll give you milk you'll give me rice and then somebody will give me flour for what i have you do barter i mean i know for a fact that when the russian ruble was collapsing i mean for uh, when the soviet union was collapsing Kent cigarettes became the medium of uh, exchange in 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 Soviet Russia in when the Soviet Russia was collapsing people used to trade in cartons of Kent cigarette so and smuggle then of course then you had this problem also mm. of fake Kent cigarettes cropping up i mean you have fake currencies even now so so if it's only a question of trust if uh, people decide to yeah, you know, seen go, go back to a system of communes go to suppose we have a nice like a kibbutz kind of a commune somewhere and everybody starts living on a barter system without uh, you know negating the use of uh, of cash or 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 legal tender and they come up with their own barter system or something else so what how can you prevent that so this is basically uh, that you know bitcoin is 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 operating in an ecosystem where everybody 
is willingly participating in it mm. all right so uh, we have seen it in the past you know because from a macro perspective also if you see that why uh, there is this uh, you know understanding where people where they are saying uh that you know the things that are happening in the macro environment if you see the the kind of money us printed uh in during the covid era many central banks printed lot of money during the covid era now we are seeing the inflations at yeah. at, at at its highest in you know places like uk us and you know other places uh including argentina turkey and then the ukraine russia war is never ending and the de dollarization that's happening uh What, what how you think that these macro uh, ec- economic factors evolving and what are the impacts that are going to happen uh, you know on india what is the impact that's going to happen on india uh, and what is your take on all the macro economic factors that are evolving right now i don't know people get Uh, we have lost his voice i think again some internet issue let's just give him a second yeah yeah he should just rejoin Hello, I lost you and I've come back. So, can yeah, you hear me now? No problem. No yeah, problem. So, I'm sorry. So, uh, so you heard I my mean, question? Uh, uh, they say the Wi-Fi is working well here. No, no. You said that how will uh, banks react? You see, no, no. This is this could be uh-huh. a hedge. You know, if people think that currencies are. Uh, I, I didn't hear you. Maybe I didn't hear you right. Go on, repeat yourself. Yeah. So, I, my question was on macro uh, economic factors that are evolving right now, and what are the uh, impacts uh, that are going to happen? you know on india what is it going to be the impact of all these macroeconomic factors that are evolving right now the india is connected to the world so they to say that india will be insulated from what's happening in the world is not necessarily correct but at the indian internal and sometimes it gives us a cushion to deal with what's happening in the world but we are very very integrated to the world so whatever happens to the world whether there's any grave hello yeah yeah, yeah. i can hear you Uh, you hear yes sir we can hear you so we can hear you happy is working so let's cut off can i do with the Yeah, can you hear me on the phone or not? Uh, so, can you hear us? I can hear you now, but I know I'm just it's just I don't know. Oh, and this is uh, I I don't know. I'm just using I'm just disconnecting the internet and I'm just doing the phone. So maybe that works better. So, is, are you able to hear me now? Yes. Yeah. See, as I said, you know, India is integrated to the world, so the world factors will definitely have an impact on India. But India is a big market by itself, and sometimes that acts as a cushion. and uh, we can weather the storm better than a lot of other countries because we have an internal market which which can be robust and which can make businesses thrive and survive all right so karthi my uh, next question is that you know since we have uh, you know 11% of global uh, web3 talent you know is in india you know and there are apprehensions Uh, from the you know government side regarding the regulations the best what they could do was to tax this industry uh, so why what do you think th- why there is a delay 
in regulation and what are the apprehensions when you speak to your you know colleagues and when you speak to other people in the in you the know, political what is, arena what is the apprehension about what what is the apprehension about what, what is the apprehension about? about crypto i mean why why it is taking then such I, a long I, I, time I, I i think people don't understand crypto it's also the fear of the unknown uh, and uh, generally the view of the government prevails and the government because oh. of of its institutional uh, institutionalized mechanism is very wary of anything new and in india uh, anything new will, will will be initially viewed as suspicion and since this is something which is so out of the box and it erodes the the authority of the central bank the government see essentially government is basically bureaucrats and advising politicians and so and bureaucrats have a very outsized say in especially in technical matters politicians hmm. tend never to overrule bureaucrats on technical matters because politicians are think that oh my god these guys have come through this kind of an whatever rigorous selection process uh, educated so they so we can't overrule them so politicians hmm. generally are very and very few politicians can stand up to a bureaucrat so especially on a technical subject but it's a political subject yes the politician sometimes it takes a very strong view but on a technical subject something like crypto they will immediately hmm. the first reaction would be to say let's ban it let's not allow it the same thing with online gaming you know i mm. mean uh, uh, you know you know that you know online gaming is here to stay i mean i i, I believe it's better to regulate it than to outright ban it and to uh, because people will always find a way to work around so many things so in fact i i would go to this other extent of saying even to legalize gambling completely why 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 i know that the, everybody who knows that uh, gambling happens and particularly sports betting is so huge in india especially in the ad, advent of uh, ipl you might as well legalize it but in india we our first reaction particularly because that stems from how the bureaucrats are advising the the ministries is is to ban things which they are not uh, you know very familiar with and that's the reaction now and and i don't think the political class has been educated enough in the sense that they have the the ability to understand it but i don't think anybody has done a proper outreach to re, to to explain to them that this is this is something which is an evolving technology which can actually have benefits and which will actually make the economy grow i mean i i and also what's happening in the world of the spectacular collapses of these crypto boom banks and things like that is not really helping the cause the cause especially the ftx scenario that that we yeah ftx beyond, yeah yeah ftx and all those things were were it's, it's some spectacular cases have happened and that's not helping the cause and uh, and 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 you know larger countries are also and you know you still hear very Uh, doomsday voices about this this technology and this kind of a medium so it only makes people wary and there has not been much of an and, and see you have to engage with the political class and i i always think that um, newer technologies are not engaging with the political class and uh, and i don't know maybe i don't know why the gap is there but i think the engagement is is very very minimal yeah uh... that's that's visible because you know out of 450 uh, plus web3 450 web3 startups 60% of, of indian web3 startups have registered outside this is a nascom report in 2022 november 2022 and uh, that just shows that startups are registering outside and catering to indian market you think that uh, this is a loss uh, the the more we are taking time you know the more the startups well, are registering outside and yes of course you know see this is not just the about the rules about startups it's about the mm. environment we are in in india you know we are very wary uh, of foreign uh, foreign investment into a company you are immediately under the radar of uh, fema which means immediately the ed jumps in see the whole uh, mm. the whole is it's, it's, it's a police state in, in in a lot of ways you know it's, it's very anti entrepreneurial because you you always want to nail them in you know you're not giving them a free hand to 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 uh, to start and to fail fast and to raise up again the minute you start and fail it's always the failure is always considered to be some sort of a fraudulent failure and then you get caught up in a lot of things a lot of businesses fail genuinely but genuine failure is not appreciated in india and somebody who fails genuinely is not allowed to get up quickly you know and that because that's sort of a because of our regulatory mechanism and our oversight mechanisms are so stringent and harsh you know it's it's not a our compliance mechanism is not here to help you to comply it's it's basically here to catch you when you're not complying you know what i mean hmm. uh, it's, 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 it's the the the, bureau, the 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 structures are not here to help you uh, to 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 comply and to grow or to, and to find reasons why you're not able to comply i'm not saying that every business is is clean or or, or being ethical and doing that but but genuinely sometimes people sometimes struggle with the compliance 
and when they struggle with the compliance there is no mechanism to help them to 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 cope with that rather than it's it's the mechanism is here only to catch them and to penalize them when they don't do it and that and that and the, the penalties and the and the system is so harsh that some people want to buy, do not want to subject themselves to this kind of a system and that's why they move out why do ultra and high net worth people leave this country then there are 7500 high net worth people who left this, who gave up indian citizenship last year mm. 7500 individuals why do they do that why why are they leaving here because they find the the tax regime and the regulatory regime to be to be uh, very overbearing on them it's not mm. people it's not business friendly the mm. the bureaucracy is not business friendly the political environment is not business friendly that's why they leaving every country taxes i mean it's not as if no country taxes every country's got rules but the way in which the regulatory institutions interact with you is very different here it's always a summons it's always a notice you know it's it's, it's a very it's a very colonially harsh way of even interacting with you you know hmm. recently uh, we saw some hope that you know in chatisgarh and places like other states as well like in maharashtra some a uh, polygon was used for to issue you know blockchain uh, to to issue caste certificates so polygon as a blockchain was used to issue caste certificates and uh, uh, polygon is 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 you know is one uh, you know project from india that is really you know uh, creating waves around the world and many many uh, countries and many many people are using it around the world i hope that you know uh, polygon has set an example that if if given a right kind of a platform and opportunity and an environment i think many startups will come from india especially in the web3 space uh, uh, uh karthi i uh, one last question i like to take from you uh, is about cbdc that recently government came up with cbdc or e rupee uh, how do you see, mm. see it are we are we heading towards a cashless system eventually no no i i think that i think was only a way for you to hold your currency it wasn't really an electronic currency right it is only a mechanism for you to hold your currency right i mean if i'm right uh, yeah. uh, i'm i'm if that's my understanding of it that it wasn't replacing the currency but it was just allowing you to hold your currency electronically and i didn't really understand how that yeah. is different from actually the way we are doing it because we are moving currencies and we're doing this electronically so i i'm not sure whether it will become completely cashless i mean if yeah. there's no nation has become completely cashless i still we have printed more notes uh, i know that people are using more uh, digital payments and uh, you know uh, 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 and accessories along with that way but i don't mm. see ourselves becoming completely cashless i don't i don't i mean uh, that will be very very uh, difficult and i don't know whether that's desirable why should we become cashless i mean uh, mm. why should everything be tracked i mean there is uh, a certain level of privacy you have by using cash and why that should be afforded why should everything be tracked what is what are we trying to do are we uh why should why should you know that i buy an ice cream or why should you know what what i mm-hmm. buy you know that kind of thing because a completely cashless economy is also a completely uh, negates privacy correct right right can a cashless right. economy be can a cashless economy will will cannot have any privacy because it is tracked right. you know cash provides you privacy yeah, absolutely yeah absolutely. yeah and why should i mean and from an individual liberty point of view we should have cash hmm. right uh karthi uh, you spoken about edtech regulation so from there i just want to understand your perspective that are you talking about a uh, like a, obviously it's a new tech as well education is also evolving with technology so are you trying going for a balanced approach or you're saying uh, because i've i've heard that you you said that regulate these entities like i mean why we are taking a lot in of time sense, in, in the sense regulate. in the sense that you see i've said this you know if you want to start a nursery school tomorrow or a play school tomorrow you need mm-hmm. to get through a lot of hoops you need to have a place which is certified by some local body you need to have mm-hmm. teachers or or, or 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 mentors there who have some level of training and you need to have some safety protocols there lots of little things and if you run want to run a school you have to get cert your curriculum needs to be certified by a board whichever board you are aligning with you need to have a school you need to have mm-hmm. a physical environment you need to have all kinds of regulations but tomorrow morning i can start offering courses online about about everything and anything what is the efficacy of this course who's vetting what you're offering there who's vetting the the credentials of the people who are supposedly teaching these courses so i think there must be some kind of a, a certification body you can't 
I mean, then why, then you can allow anybody to prescribe medicines online. Why do you why don't you allow that? You can't have quacks uh, uh, prescribing medicines. You can't have uh, non lawyers dispensing uh, legal advice and and uh, or non doing that. You need people with certification. I, I I'm not I'm not stifling entrepreneurship. Of course, the online mechanism is good. It, it delivers things where where, where 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 physical infrastructure is lacking. But that also needs to come. It is better off if universities start offering it, because universities are already offering courses. If this, if somebody who is not a university, not a school, suddenly starts offering courses, what is the efficacy of the whole thing? I mean, who are these uh, mentors? I know that a lot of people, a lot of these online courses say, "Oh, you will be mentored by somebody who is actually an who was an IIT student." But hmm. how do we know this guy shows up? I mean, how do you know he's from IIT? Uh, how do we even verify this? Uh, who's verifying all this? There are tall claims made by these edtech companies, and you are seeing a spectacular failure right now. One edtech company, which is which is just collapsed in, right in front of our eyes. Uh, so, and I, I've been flagging that forever. So, I, I, I'm not saying. Uh, see, while, while we must we must not stifle entrepreneurship, but we can't allow fly-by-night operators also to get by, uh, by 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 under the garb of saying free trade and entrepreneurship, right? You need to have regulation. Now, why? Why are we not allowing um, uh, certain drugs to be sold online? Because we need regulation, right? You can't uh, have acid. Oh, you, there's a big furor about getting acid online, correct? Because there have been acid attacks. You need regulation. You can say, oh no, yeah. no, free trade. You should be able to buy whatever you want online. Mm. You can't buy acid online. I know there was a case in Delhi where this guy bought acid online and they went down and shut down that that portal which allowed it, or mm. they went and took action against it. So, so everything can't be. You have to balance the needs of society. You have to balance the 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 the, the claims you are making. You have to be verifiable. Just because you are online doesn't make you true, right? It doesn't make Absolutely. you infallible. I mean, I mean, can I start a university tomorrow morning or a college course tomorrow morning? I'd rather have universities start online courses, give it out under the under the the the, the stamp of approval of a university, rather than uh, somebody who is not aligned to any kind of an educational institution. So That's whatever right. these ed tech companies are doing, I think universities must must partner. Somebody must partner a university, and it must be under the the broad, uh, you know, umbrella of a university, which should should be offering these courses. Right. Thank you very much, Karthi, and thank you very much for I'm sorry, answering. Sorry, sorry about questions. sorry about all this. Dr. Yeah, yeah, that's perfectly and, okay uh, because uh, there there are things that are not in our control. That's uh, perfectly okay. But I think you answered all the questions pretty well, and the kind of uh, in depth you know knowledge you have about the subject uh, that was really not expected. But I'm I'm really happy that somebody uh, from the political uh, arena, you know, because because we generally you know have this uh, perception that political uh, politicians generally don't have that much in depth knowledge about the tech tech. But I think uh, it's commendable. the way you explained it thank you very much for that and thank, thank you very you. much for your time and input enjoyable thank, thank you very much bye bye over to you thank dikman you. thank you everyone for joining us uh, kashif thank you so much for moderating this conversation it, i don't think it would have would have been possible to have this great conversation without you no no um, it's just the the technical uh, this thing are sometimes are not in your hand so uh, uh but oh, nevertheless the session was pretty amazing thank you so much for your time again and thank you everyone who came and joined okay, we hope you. to see you guys soon uh, have a great night क्रिप्टो उत्पादक एनएफटीज अनियमित हैं और अत्यधिक जोखिम भरे हो सकते हैं यह संभव है कि इस तरह के लेनदेन से हुए किसी भी नुकसान के लिए नियमित सहारा प्राप्त ना हो